Welcome to The Stitch. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about our quilts. Or just fun stories, really. That's true. Okay, our episodes come out monthly and are complemented by virtual sew-ins and weekly podcasts. And you can learn more about us at thestitchtvshow.com. So, what have you been doing this month since we last talked? Um, I, it's hard to remember the previous month, but a lot of things went kablooey in my house this particular week. <laughs> like, this is week. So, literally, okay. like, the TV, the main TV in the living room died. <gasps> like, oh, that's, like, bad. You'd think, oh, it was subtle, but then we realized there was a puff of smoke that came out of the back of it. Oh. <laughs> so, no actual fire. TV, dead. Uh, a puff of smoke? Like, what happened? That's a good question. <laughs> We're really trying not to ask too many deep questions lest we find out perhaps the snake that lives in our basement crawled up in the TV somehow. Oh, don't even tell me stuff like that. I am that is I not... mean, maybe he doesn't live there. He just oh. comes and sheds his skin and leaves it hanging from oh, the rafters. Oh, over stop. The... Just don't even go there. I can't even believe you're telling me this. Okay. It's I do not do... creepy. Reptiles and rodents I don't do well with. So and even, bugs. Even better. Just stuff outside, really. <laughs> I was on a phone call for work on Thursday and I heard this kind of explosion coming from some side of the house. And I thought, well, maybe my son's out there shooting Nerf guns and hit something. No. So I go, and I'm like, sounds like it came from the kitchen. So I go, and I look in the freezer, and my husband left a Coke in there from the morning. Because oh. <laughs> he's like, ah, I'm going to just chill this for work. And forgot it. <laughs> so the Coke is fun. And that's what you need to know. Like, you know, it's like a frozen so you, turkey. Never deep fry a frozen turkey. So for, for science's sake, sake, you put it in at 7 in the morning. It'll explode by about 4 p.m. There you go. Well, good to know now. That, yeah, so don't do that, kids. Don't do that. It'll make your mother kind of angry. Uh, and I, I called my husband. I'm like, <laughs> I would just like you to know that I now have to clean up the inside of the freezer. I just And he's like, it. I'll come home right away. And I'm like. Please do not. I do not <laughs> want to see you. You're in so much trouble. Don't go about. I was like, I will clean it up. I just need you to take the expression of my displeasure, and then it'll be fine by the time you get home. <laughs> the expression. And it was. <laughs> and we did not speak of it again until now. It's documented on YouTube. Hooray. So now it's just it'll be the Coke incident. Yes. There you go. Uh, 2016. <laughs> That'll be a no. Yeah. Just the Coke incident of 2016. And the trifecta of explosions was when my cat. That okay, has so TV. TV. Coke. Coke. Uh, my cat that has like nasal stuff um, got inside the hoodie that I was wearing, which is a little oversized, and stuck his head in my sleeve and sneezed. <laughs> and so is that like, boogers. okay, is that like the same rule? You know, like three people, yeah. you know, three people die, so you have I'm three explosions. I'm good on explosions for now. Okay, well, good to know. So I won't look at that. Hopefully, your week has been less exploding. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say I took another quilting class this oh, past month. Way better than my <laughs> drama. I took a quilting. And what was nice was it was a local um, teacher at a local quilt shop. Okay. And, yeah, those are good. You don't always have to take national teachers and stuff. And it was fun because I was the only student in the class. So all kinds of personal attention. And it was invisible <laughs> machine applique. So I was taking another applique class. But isn't it? There's also nowhere to hide. No, you're right. You do this now. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to. I want to check my phone. <laughs> yeah, I can't like zone out in class. You have to like focus on them and stuff. But no, it was a good class. I enjoyed it. Cool. So I did that. And then I've been working on the quilt show this past week. So it hasn't been. I didn't have any explosions. <laughs> I read a few books. <laughs> I read three books. Is that I read more than three actually? But now were these quick. three simultaneous finishes because you've been reading all three at the same time, or were yeah, they like you read one and finished it and then in sequence or in parallel? I all oh, okay. All right. So I read about four books at the same time, at least four books at the same time. Not, I mean, like I'll read one so far and then I'll put it down. And I'll read, and I'll pick it up, which really kind of leads us to one of our topics today because this is part of my issue. Yeah. So. I'll be listening to a specific book in the car because I like audible books. So I'll have one that I'm listening to in the car. I'll have one that I'm reading in my bedroom. I'll have one that I'm reading on my iPad. I'll have, you know, hard copy book that I'm reading up in my bedroom that sits next to my bed, like right before I go to sleep. 
And I have one on my iPad. Like, so, like, I have a lot of books it's that like I read. like George Costanza of reading. Well, your worlds cannot collide. You must keep them in distinct I, geographic locations. No, 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 because my iPad travels with oh, me okay. everywhere. So, no, not necessarily that. Or if I'm really into the book upstairs, it'll come downstairs so I can finish. So, no, that's not it. I just, I read a lot of things at the same time. And I it's amazing that I keep all the storylines straight. Yeah, I would think that the, the worlds would be colliding. No, not really. No, no. Okay. you don't have like mm -mm. Claire but from I've Outlander done, pop up with a dragon. Which <laughs> hey, we're very excited. I love dragons. Like and you throw a dragon mm -hmm. in a book, and I'm all about that jack attack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love a good dragon. That's the only thing yourself. Outlander's missing is a dragon, really. But the, Game of Thrones like is that. coming back on, so you know we'll have Game of Thrones too. And I'm very excited about turns coming on again. These are all my like. Binge, Orphan Black Outland. came back. That's what oh, I did. Oh, I haven't week. watched Orphan oh. Black. I need to catch up on that on Netflix. I love what they did to open the season because oh, I was like, I don't remember what happened at the end of last season, but I'm excited for it to be back. I well, hope I can figure it out. <laughs> I was excited about Outlander. I was very excited about Outlander, so that was fun. Cool. I watched that, and it's on today, so I can't wait. Gonna watch it again. I mean, the next episode. You mean like for the third time in a row? I did watch. I do, but do do you not do that? Like, I don't do that with books as much, but I definitely do that with movies. Like, I'll rewatch stuff over and over again. I will reread books. I will rewatch re movies, a lot of books. TV shows usually because I have quite the stable of shows on the DVR. Like, I got to do one and done, and if I dwell on it, then there's a pile up. Oh, yeah. I don't like pile ups. We'll get to that later too. No. I've been watching Pitch Perfect on HBO. I've watched it like five or six times, like Amazing. recently. It's like the new Pitch Perfect Bring Two. It on. Pitch Perfect Two. That's okay. well, the, the acapella sing-off thing that they have in David Cross' basement is hilarious. Anyway, so that's our. <laughs> we should probably talk about what was sewing, Quilting. quilting, quilting stuff. So what? <laughs> what? Um, so today we're yes. going to be talking about a new quilt along and yes. UFOs. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is kind of yeah. like Lynn's book issue. Yeah. With UFOs. Okay, but before we get to that, let's talk about a potential UFO for everyone. I quilt a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she said that, and she, we, seriously, it probably will be a UFO for me. But I'm going to try to keep up because I'm not good at these. May I so. point out that in order to have a UFO, you must start it? <laughs> Just saying, you can't be a UFO if you never get started. Okay, on well, it. let's not That's talk about UFO. All right, let's talk about summer, the summer reading program. Okay. So we you may have picked up that perhaps we read some books. Yes, we do. And books. we have friends that also read books, and some of these same friends also design patterns. Oh, so uh, a friend of four mine, books. I know that I met through podcasting. Very lazy Daisy, uh, in real life, Daisy Fredericks, designed a bookshelf quilt. Um, and we reached out to her and said, hey, could we use your pattern on a yes. quilt along? And it's going to be the summer reading quilt along. So we'll have a picture at the break of what the quilt looks like. Um, and you have two options. You can do five inch blocks for the bookshelf and the finished quilt will be around 24 by 28. So wall hanging. Or you can size it up to 10 inch blocks and have more of a lap quilt, which is what I'll be doing. Um, so we're going to kick it off. This is kind of a preview announcement. We're going to kick it off May 24th, um, and there's 16 blocks total. We're going to do two blocks a week. And so it, when we say two blocks a week, I will show pictures of my finished blocks, how I chose fabrics. Her finished blocks. We will show pictures of Pam's finished blocks. My finished blocks. Because we're just hoping to God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I'm a little worried. But two blocks a week. Ones. I they're know. They're small. I know they're small, but okay. They're small. I'm a little nervous. Make three. They're small. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they used to have, well, they still do. They have those Saturday samplers where you go to the quilt store and you get mm -hmm. the free block. Like I used to do that when I learned, was mm -hmm. learning how to quilt. But then it was like a guilt trip. Oh my gosh, I got to get a block done before the next meeting next month. And now you're telling me how to do You should just go home and do it that day and then it's done. You don't think oh, about it. Oh, I don't it. do it that day. Time. This is another issue. We'll talk about the UFO issue. Process. This is, yes. <laughs> anyway, back to the quilt along. Yes. So it's going to run for eight weeks to construct the block. So that'll go until about July 12th. Uh, and then we'll give everyone a couple weeks to put tops together, figure out layout. And I'll have some suggestions for how to jazz it up um, like I did maybe with my Harry Potter bookshelf. I might do a little different layout and give some tips. And then we're going to do a final linky with prizes. 
Oh, uh, yay. Prizes. July prizes. 26th. I like prizes. Yeah, so we're going to run for about three months total. So because it's books and summer reading, it just made sense. So we're going to encourage people to post progress with uh, the hashtag summer reading QAL for Quilt Along. And that could be Instagram, Facebook, wherever. We just want to see your stuff. Let's just celebrate if Lynn makes any progress. <laughs> Honestly, at the end, if you just post a picture of a block in the linky, you could still be eligible for the prize. I'm not Yay! <laughs> that makes me feel better. I don't think better. you can get the prize, though, because we're posting. That's sad. Thing. I like prizes. So, we'll have a blog post go up on the stitchtvshow.com on May 24th to have it all be now, revealed. Now, do we, okay, do we get to, like, put in our favorite book titles and stuff? Is that Absolutely. part of Absolutely. All right. So, now to. I'm a little more excited about it, because, like, yes. I want the creativity of, you know, we'll have all the... Can you fit it on a five-inch block, though? Well, I th- I kind of like the idea of, like, changing some of your favorite titles to, you know. Quilty. Quilty kind of titles, yeah. The Pride and the Applique. <laughs> it's the Pride, the Prejudice, or, you know, Gone with the Wind, Gone with the Quilt. <laughs> Stuff like that. Okay. I think it would be fun. That All right. Great. Maybe not. <laughs> I know because then you have to. Well, you know, you can put. All right, you know, yes. I love bookshelf quilts, and I've said this a long Which time. Which is kind of why we're doing it. It's kind of why it's we're doing it. It's my way this. to get her to actually make herself a bookshelf quilt. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, but when I was in high school, I actually painted. Well, we did the musical My Fair Lady, and I was in charge of the sets, and I actually painted the entire set. And we had to have the library for so it's got like all these sets. So I painted books like a major amount of flats and I would like write in all my favorite titles. Gone with the Wind was on there, of course. That was when I was reading like North and South by John Jakes and stuff. Read I was in my Civil War period. I read all these Civil War. (laughs) I read those. I read all the VC Andrews stuff. But that'll be interesting too. So people should tell us, you know, not only when we have these books, when they're doing their block, but like What's your favorite books and, you know, what books are you putting in that block? Yeah. So to complicate mine a little bit, uh, I originally was just going to make myself another bookshelf quilt. And then I was talking to my father-in-law and he had seen some pictures that my mother-in-law had taken at a quilt show. And she had seen a bookshelf quilt and took a picture of it and showed him. He's like, oh, that looks great. That looks so neat. I wish maybe we could have one like that. Ah, so hint, hint. I'm going to end up giving mine to my father-in-law. Oh, now he's going to know. Oh, no. He he doesn't know how the oh, internet so works. Oh, so this isn't a surprise. Oh, internet Oh, works. and he knows I'm making it for The so YouTubes. Okay. We don't know how the YouTubes work. It's on the tubes with the U's. Uh, what is that? Uh, except he is completely colorblind. <laughs> Well, then you can just make it. It will. And the words came out of my mouth before I could take them back when I said, what colors would you like? And he just looked at me like, seriously, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. So I, I get to play with value. Now, I'm not going to make it ugly because other people do come to the house and will see it. And they're not going to be like, ooh, Pam makes jacked up quilts. <laughs> but I get to I play more with value me. than color, I think. So I have to make sure I have good contrast between the background fabric and yeah. the books themselves. Now. One other note, this pattern is paper pieced. So we will have links to tutorials on how to do paper piecing. There are people that have written excellent tutorials and videos and all that. So if you've not done do it, it oh, now's now your it's even more hard. It's just paper. I uh, know, I don't know. No, it's just a paper piecing takes long. It's not that I can't do paper piecing. Backward and in heels. Backward. The ginger <laughs> It's just it is the ginger. I just can't it just takes longer. So I'm gonna be trying to do good to stay up, but paper piecing, maybe that'll be better. Uh, okay. I'm okay. doing this. So we're doing it. We're doing it. We're I've doing already complained. You know, I've told you stories about how Pam's complained about whatever in the car. Like, I'm the one who's complained about this one. What have I complained about in the car? Oh, the Harry Potter quilt. You're like, oh, it's taking too long. Yeah. Well, that's because it was only one block a week. Now I get two a week. Bam. And actually, I get to do all mine ahead of time <laughs> and not stick to this timeline because I got to have the stuff ready to show people. Oh, that's, that's right. Long, so. Okay. Well, I'm excited about having the books. Yes. I am going to be excited about the book quilt. Okay, good. I mean, the, I'm excited about the what we're doing because I love books and I love well, quilting. And there you go. I think this is a good thing. That's okay. perfect. So watch for that coming out in May. And Daisy's so awesome. She so, oh. you know. She does that, amazing stuff with color. Yes, oh. yes, yes. And scraps. And scraps. So, and this is a good scrap thing too. Oh, and the pattern is available on Craftsy. Um, there's a small cost for it. I think it's five ninety five. So it's a cheap pattern. You guys go and support Daisy. Um, yeah, she's awesome. So, 
So yes. we'll have links to all that good stuff when the go live post happens on May 24th. And we'll have a preview post uh, probably the beginning of May to talk about fabric requirements, link to the patterns. So you guys can go ahead and get it and how much fabric you'll need for it, depending on the block size that you're doing. So, yep. So I'm going to do the little one because I'll I wall hanging and be perfect. So excellent. Yay. Okay. And you so, don't have to have as big enough scraps. You can have smaller scraps. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So we okay. should take a break. So we could show people a picture of the quilt. Yes. And then we'll be right back. Exactly. Okay, welcome back. Um, what we need to talk about next is UFOs. And everybody has them. Well, I, <laughs> Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Dun, 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 I was actually dun, singing dun, the Dr. Who theme, but... Oh, okay. that is Dr. Who, you're right. TARDIS could be a UFO. But how is... Uh, TARDIS isn't a UFO. If you saw TARDIS it's flying a police through the box. sky, would you be like... It's a police girl, box, and the doctor's right. coming. That's what I would say. It's a police box, the doctor's coming. Because I watch Dr. Who. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so UFOs. What do we know about UFOs? I have some questions for you. Well, okay. Go In ahead. the quilting world, UFO stands for unfinished object. Just laying that out there. Oh, that's we have good. new quilters that don't know what the heck we're talking about. That's true. How's that different from if a whip? New, but if they're a new quilter, they don't have any yet. <gasps> you never know. <laughs> they may have inherited stuff. Oh, true. Maybe that's why they're a quilter. <laughs> I got this stuff. I don't know what to do with it. Um, I get those calls. Mm -hmm. Like, I got, I got one yesterday. I have a bunch of quilts I don't know what to do with. What do you want to do with them? <laughs> Why do you need me to tell you? Um, all right, so what is a UFO? What, is, what defines a UFO for you? Because I have some questions around this. So in technical details, how we defined it for a guild challenge was any project that you had bought or assembled materials for had the pattern, have everything packaged and ready to go. And to me, it's more about like, and you started cutting. Okay, so because you that means actually... you can't like move the fabric to another project. Okay, I... up until like you've, you've you committed it. it. Oh. Like if you forgot the label, to me, like well, it's still done. You're just a bad quilter. So you're making tops count as UFO? Yes. Oh They're my not gosh. finished. I'm so. What much are you going to stay warm under a pile of tops? You know what? Historically, tops last. I mean, if we're looking at the historical record, tops last longer than quilts do. Well, those people don't watch YouTube. No, it's because they never get you. <laughs> because they're dead. <laughs> if you find if you find antique tops, they they don't cost as much, and they're in better shape than antique quilts are nine times out of ten. Because they're unfinished and they don't. <laughs> well, get used. I'm just saying that's a benefit of having a UFO, so people can come in my my basement and find all these tops and go, look, these will last hundred years. I don't know that you're using the word benefit in the right. <laughs> context okay i won't be here but <laughs> i'm just saying it could be anyway time. so tops <laughs> tops count as ufo i'm in so much trouble because let's be honest how many ufos You're be dead. Do you, you won't care i know how many ufos <laughs> do you have one there's my point she has no ufos i have i don't i can't even one tell you greater than zero <laughs> just saying math you know Comparatively. Comparatively, though, I don't even know how many I have. I really don't. Do kits count? Like, if I buy a kit that comes with fabric, well, if we count that, but I, I never opened the package, is it a UFO? If we do that, then I have two. Okay, so you have a kit. <laughs> double the UFO. I gotta go. <laughs> I've got sewing to do. Just double. <laughs> do jelly rolls count as a UFO? No. Okay, so those are just fabric. They're just fabric. Okay. Well, to me, like you have to make progress on the project to the point that you can't All change right, gears so, and use it for something so, else. Uh, I can, you could unpackage a, a kit and just put it in your stash and do it with something else later. So, because I've bought the like I've bought these kits, but mm -hmm. I haven't touched them or opened the package, so I don't think that counts. Do you ever intend to make them, or do you just buy them because in look retirement maybe? <laughs> no, I bought them because I liked them and I thought I'd do them or something. Or something. Or something. How long do you have? Okay, here's my other question. How long do you have to have it or be working on it? Before What's the amount of time between you stop working on it till you start working it on again before it falls into that UFO category? So here's where I have multiple 
whips or works in progress. <gasps> oh, maybe versus... all my UFOs are just whips. No, because if you sat on them for a year and haven't done diddly, like, that's oh. a UFO. To me, it's like, <laughs> so I actively have plans for this. What makes it a UFO is I got stalled because I was scared to do the next step because I thought I would mess it up or I don't have the materials or I'm missing a ruler or, you know, whatever. Not, yeah. If you're intentionally stalled on it, like, uh, like. I, I ran out of fabric. Forward. Yeah, like, I can't move forward. <laughs> like, that would be a thing. That's I'd not her done. problem. <laughs> I don't have any fabric. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. not my issue. I, I, what, why does it matter? Like, so, okay, so it has to be year. If you were like up in your head about the number to... of UFOs, like maybe you should just channel Elsa and let it go. Let it go. Well, no, I think that that's a question though, because I think uh, to, in my head, they're not all UFOs, but probably by definition they are. Yeah. I mean, because I got it, I probably got 15 tops over there that I haven't quilted. Those are UFOs. That's a pileup. Yes, but, but, like, I just finished a couple of them, so, as in, I just finished the top, so just because they're not quilted yet, how long can it sit that I know, pile? like, I have a top that I've finished, and I just haven't had the time to quilt it yet, but so I've had it for long? two months, so does that count as a UFO, or that's is that just what a, I'm saying. a pile-up that I need to finish quilting? So that's what I'm saying, so I what's know. our timeline of what I think it defines? depends on the person. A year? Depends on how much time you have to quilt. If how you about only have five, five years? If you only have five minutes to quilt a day, like you're going to get a little more grace, or you should give yourself a little more grace for how long it's I taking like you grace. to finish. Grace stuff. is important. Can I point out she doesn't have a full time job, <laughs> <laughs> and she's still got fifteen tops that's not been quilted. But let me point out too that when I quilt something, it's not just Bana it's bananas. It, it's not it's three hours and I'm done. Like she came over here and did a king size a. 111 by 111 quilt in three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. No, I finished that top in December. Yeah, okay. And I'm just so, on it, waiting. waiting for me to go, hey, the long well, arms or, or waiting for me to get up the courage to tackle it on my home machine. And um, you'll know that my oh, courage ran out before. I'm glad you did. That thing was huge. I was like, oh, I can't oh, imagine that, you doing that. And that full size arm. one was bad enough. Oh, oh girl. Mm. Yes, now when I quilt a quilt, though, like I'll put 80 hours in it. Because, <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not. Because I just spend way too much time going, oh, you know, and drawing little teeny tiny things. <laughs> well, and I, my approach to quilting is like, I know I'm going to make more quilts. So if this one doesn't end up like show quality perfect. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Because not every quilt I intend to put in a show. Like if it's going to a baby, babies don't care. <laughs> Babies That's are kind of dumb. Sorry, babies, but you are. I just get. <laughs> You're not going to notice. We're going to get comments on that. <laughs> babies what, are from dumb. a baby? A baby's going to get on YouTube <laughs> and be like, I'm not dumb. I'm I on YouTube. That. Whatever, babies. Take a hike. I'm sorry, you can't because you can't walk it because you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna get in trouble with this. I'm telling you. All right. Well, so, I'll look for the baby union to take it up with me. <laughs> the baby union. Um, okay. The union rep's so, gonna be a toddler. I'm just saying. What are they gonna throw a juice box at me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, where, what were we talking about? UFOs. UFOs. We're back. To, we're not baby hating anymore. We're back to UFOs. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, we should probably talk about um, why don't we finish UFOs? I mean, why are there even UFOs? Maybe we'll do, take a break and do that. Yeah, you let's take a break like... and we'll get back to some of the psychology. And then, like, and get out of baby hating and into UFO finishing. <laughs> Fine, baby. You win this time. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, on the break, you just saw some close-up of the quilting for this quilt hanging behind us, uh, which was almost a UFO. You it, almost have a UFO? Al almost. Okay. It was a, a brush with UFO-ness. Okay. Because, so I knew I wanted to quilt this and hang it in a show for the show that we had in 2015. It was... And I got the top done in a class that Lynn taught, so hooray. Hooray. Um, it's beautiful. And then I thought, 
oh, I don't know how to quilt this. I, I don't want to mess it up. So <laughs> I sat on the top. Well, not like literally sat on it, but metaphorically and mentally sat oh. on it for a couple months before I figured out what I wanted to do and did I have the confidence to do it. And even now I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I could have done it better, but it's done. As yeah. we said in college, D for diploma. D for no. <laughs> C for commencement. No, I think I earned an H for honorable mention. Hooray. Yeah, you did. You got an honorable mention yeah, on that. Yeah, so this was like, I finished the top, it looked great, and I'm like, I don't want to mess it up, which was one of the reasons why, which is why I have that one that's been hanging in my bathroom for a couple of years now. Yeah, but didn't you commit to, uh, to a guild thing that you're going to get it done? Yes. This year? But I've also put it on like my finish along list for like two years. So, oh, so no guild. Good luck for that guild. <laughs> You're not my mom. <laughs> There's one guild in the area that does a UFO challenge to their membership. Yes. And I think this is how it works. I could be wrong, but they list 12 UFOs and you put a number by each one of them. And then at the monthly meeting, they draw a number. And so if it's number eight, everybody who put that UFO on number eight has to finish that one that month. And if they don't, then they have to bring in a fat quarter right. that goes into like a prize bucket. Yeah, and I so at the cool. end of the year, you raffle off or somebody gets the bucket of fat quarters. Yeah, now if I had to list 12 USO, UFOs, I'd have to put in like kits I bought and, you know, stuff that to me isn't a UFO. It's maybe more of a work in progress just because I haven't done it yet. I can do it with just the quilt tops. I know. It's really sad. I know. But it's... I do like that because then there's like a prize at the end. Now, we're, for the guild that we're in... Um, we're doing a prize at the end as well, although I suppose I should figure out what that is by the time we finish. <laughs> Whoops. What do we owe? Oh, but we don't have to pay the No, we don't have to pay. It's just thing. if you didn't finish it. And it's voluntary. You, know. you don't have, I mean, oh, yeah. it's not like yeah, we you're making them everybody in. We didn't want to freak them out. So the question is, though, why don't you, when does it become a UFO and, and why? Why does it become a UFO? I mean, for me, it's so much more about, like, I don't think I can do this justice. Because um, I, I agree with you know, that. I keep things moving in the sewing room. So just, you know, she does. It's the progress amazing. train does not really make a lot of pit stops in my sewing room. So yeah. for me, I, I agree with that. I lose interest. Like, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do this right now. Yeah. So like I lose interest in the project and I get sidetracked in that. Or for me, it's more, um, I, I, I guess I'm like a squirrel in that. I'm like, oh, look, this is pretty over here. This looks good. I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I, I, creativity for me gets into play, like I'll get bored with whatever this is, it's not feeding me creatively, so I don't want to finish it. Some of it's fear, I agree, I, I agree with that. I just don't know what I want to do. That's yeah. why I sit on those tops, is like I'll stare at them going, I don't know how to quilt this, I don't know what I want to do. And then I get into the whole, with quilting, I get into the whole game of, I could just stipple it and be done. I mean, I can do a king size quilt in three hours and be done. But Who's got two thumbs and stipple a king size quilt. This girl. <laughs> <laughs> but then I look at it and go, but it needs more than that, or I want to. You know, I get caught up in well, so honoring the quilt. Like I'm, I'm always about honoring the quilt. So for this king size quilt that I did, it's kind of like spinny things. They're not really spinny pinwheels, things. but there's like the blocks no, look like right. spinny things. And they're set on and point. And then there were borders and they were set on point. And I could have gone and done custom quilting inside each spinny thing. And I could have done fancy stuff in the background. Yeah. But, you know, it's it was a Christmas quilt. So it's going to be out for maybe four weeks on my bed. And the cats are going to lay on it. There's going to be cat hair. And it's going to be crumbled up. Oh, I can't. You know, and so. So me, what like, are you going to use it for? Now, if yeah. I'm doing charity quilts or community service quilts, however you want to call them, you're right. I do them quick. I do you quick, you know. Yeah. And I think, too. Like, overall design. If I'm doing a wall, like this is a wall hanging. So I felt okay having dense quilting in it because I didn't need it to be cuddly. And most of my stuff's smaller. So from that standpoint, yeah. I do smaller stuff. So it does. Or it's like. Or it's a it's a quilt that's gonna hang in a shop, and I'm like, well, I can't put jacked up quilting on that. But also, you with can't my do, name on it. Well, you can't <laughs> do too much go, crazy stuff because then people get intimidated and think I, I could never do that class. Well, you should see the one that. I just dropped off then because um, it's it. got crazy stuff in it. Mm, and I but, I have been there when people have seen your quilts and they're like, oh, I don't think I could do that. I don't and know. I, so anyway, if you quilt for shops, remember you have to 
finish your well, quote so they appeal yes. to others. Well, my and my thought process on that is, it's my class. This is a sample for my class. Yeah. It's gonna have my quilting on it. Mm -hmm. It's not, and there are other people in the shop that does shop quilts that do the stipple all over meander. But when yeah. you look at something for, that's got my name on it, I want it to be good, especially if it's hanging up in public. If it's at my house, yeah, the quilts that are on the couch, those are, you know, meandered and stippled or not really. I don't do stippling. Stippling confuses me. To me, it's just a jigsaw puzzle. I get in the corner and I'm like, how did I get there? I don't know. I do other mm -hmm. overall designs that aren't necessarily, that are easier to do, whatever. But I've gotten to where I do really kind of micro, a lot of micro stuff. So uh, like, how do you... How do you know you got 15 tops? Like, are they in a pile? Are they... I'm guessing. Honestly, they're the over there in a pile, and I don't know how many are there. So storage could be an issue. Because to me, like, I don't have... I have some closed-off boxes where I put things, in the, but the stuff that's in there is honestly mostly um, clothing fabric. So projects to make for clothing. Um, mm. But if I'm working on a, a quilt or a project, like, the pieces are on my sewing table, and I can see them. Because I've got a big cutting table and I've got the luxury of having that space to have them out where I can see them. Right. So I do feel like a lot of people fall in the trap of like, oh, I didn't know I still had this quilt because they don't have it where they can see it. So oh, clear yeah. bins are helpful. <laughs> uh, not putting everything in a closed up box and shoving it under a table. Oh, that's why I can't tell you how many how yeah. many UFOs I've got. Because I'll like, well, I used to do the block of the month things. And so I would do those and then I would put them in. You know, the I use those 12 by 12 mm -hmm. scrapbook bins. Yeah, those are good. And I put those in there, and then I put them in the little roller cart. and Out of sight, out of mind. They're in the little mm -hmm. roller cart, yeah, and they've never been finished. Those. But I've got 12 blocks. Done. Done. But that, I was learning how to quilt then. I think I went from, for me, my quilt journey has been, I went from learning how to piece by doing the block of the month thing, which I think is a great program, and... You know, one of the quilt stores here, uh, several quilt stores here do it. And, um, but I got bored with, I don't want to use your fabrics anymore. I don't want to use the, I, I don't want to do this new block from the standpoint, I understand technically how to do it now. Mm -hmm. So I don't need that anymore. And I want to create my own stuff. So I went from learning how to do the techniques, which I take a lot of technique classes. And then I want to create my own stuff. Now that's another question. So you take a technique class, like I just took this invisible applique class, and I did a block, and the block's done. Is it the flower? Yes. I did that too. I took the same class. Yes. Years ago, but. Oh no no no! This is a different technique. Oh. It's not the Sharon Schomburg oh. technique. It's a different. One. So now I have three applique techniques. I did understand. You use similar know. colors. You can put them all into one quilt. Yes, I did. <gasps> there you go. There you awesome. go. So anyway, um, but I got the block done, but is that an unfinished project? I mean, really, it's a technique that you learned and a class sample. Is it, what do you do with those? Like, they're unfinished. They're not, you know, you don't buy, when you're taking a technique class, compared to taking a class to make a quilt. Right. Which is to... Where you end up to, with a block. Right, or, where you just end up with a block so that you understand how to do paper piecing or yeah. how to do invisible applique or fused applique or whatever. So for me, when I if I take a class like that and I end up with a block or something, like a small top, I will go ahead and add to it and make it a quilt and then usually donate it. Oh, that's a good idea. When I take a quilting class, though, for free motion quilting, like those end up, they're usually like fat quarter sized. Um, or I've had some 12 by 12 samples. Those, honestly, because I have cats, I use those to cover other works in progress. So the cat will lay on top of that sample thing and not on the quilt I'm actually working on. Right. So that's good that idea. contain some of the cat hair. <laughs> but I don't necessarily so cat go... cat hair containers is yeah, really what we're making. Pretty much. Cat hair collectors. <laughs> um, but I don't necessarily, like, take this, you know, two pieces of muslin with batting in between and some feathers on it. I don't bind it or anything. You know what? I just kind of flop it out I, there. And I'm not going to say I do this with all of them, but what I've done with a lot of my class samples is I make pillows. If they're just a block... Yeah. I put a border on it and I make a pillow. Yeah. That's a good and thing. then I have a bench in my um, the library. Name. Well, <laughs> we call it the library because it's all the bookshelves in there. But there's a bench in there and I have all these pillows in there from different classes. And I can tell you this was from 
you know, so-and-so's class, and I learned this, and this from this person's class, and so I usually make a pillow, and they're always, because I'm picking out my fabric to go, you know, for just that sample, it's usually the same kind of colors. Orange. It's oranges and reds, and throw a little black and whites in there. Yeah, oranges, reds, yellows. I live in the warm world. The warm world. Those cute little warm colors. It's my jam. <laughs> she lives on this side. I live on this side. Yep. So the middle's prettier than the outside. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> Don't anyway. Me. All right. So that's what I do. What about time? Do you run out of time? Do you have oh, time? time's always an issue. And you would think I have time, but time is always an issue. And part of it is, for me, I, I agree with you. It's, I need a deadline. If you want me to finish something, honest, the way I'm made, the way my brain works, the way is best for me. Every personality test will tell you this. I need a deadline. Give me a deadline. I'll get it done. Even if you make up a deadline, like I got to have this done by Sunday. Yeah. Like, can you make up your own deadline or do you need someone external to you to assign it? Um, depends. Like sometimes I can make up my own deadline and I'm good and I keep it. And then sometimes I go, Hmm, I'd rather read this book. <laughs> and I ignore my own deadline. But if it's got to be done for a class sample or if it's got to be done because I'm afraid of Pam or it's got to be done because <laughs> she's scary. She's very scary. Not scary. I know. People do. Just because I made a boss cry at work once. I mean, maybe twice. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Different bosses, by the way. Yeah. See, One of them was Canadian. I believe it. Anyway, sorry, Kenda. <laughs> <laughs> but that guy was a weird. <laughs> anyway, so I wonder if they're going to be hearing us whisper. So we're whispering now on the stitch. <laughs> anyway, so I just, I, so yeah, if I make up a deadline, sometimes I stick with it. It depends on who gives it to me. And if it's a hard deadline, yes, I will make it. I, and I'm the kind of person who, you know, in school, Stayed up till two the night before the paper was due and wrote the paper. I mean, that's, uh, that's I was me. the person my senior year of high school. That did all the homework before it was assigned. That finished my <laughs> term paper on James Thurber two and a half weeks early. And I turned it in and my teacher was like, really? <gasps> I'm like, uh, yes, I would like it out of my hair because it's done. Goodbye. I'd like to check it off my list now. Oh, yeah, no. Giant if it was, <laughs> If it's due on Friday, I'm starting Thursday night. Like, it's bad. I'm not as bad about that as an adult, but as a teenager, I was much worse. Yeah, I'm. I actually about wrote it now. a paper on the benefits of procrastination and how it was good for you. He didn't like it as well. <laughs> I don't know why. Perhaps you could tell you wrote it at the last minute. <laughs> yeah, I did, but it does allow me to focus. Like I get super hyper focused on time. So, but what else does? Why else do you not finish them? Aside from time, which that's part of it for me. You know, a, a lot of it for me was skills. Even though, you know, I've been quilting for no. 16, 17 years. I know. Like, I did it here. Like, I know I could do some straight line quilting next to some free motion. But I am stuck on this stupid UFO because I'm scared of cross hatching it. When it comes oh. time to quilt it. <laughs> I have the thing now that you can, I bought a new tool that you can cross hatch mark. But I still have to finish it. Yeah. Um, for me, I agree with the skill thing. For me, I have my biggest one that's been hanging over my sewing machine for uh, yes. years, years. And it looks gorgeous. It's a, it's a sketched out, drawn picture of Josie, my dog, and with a quilt block behind it. And it's probably, I don't know, what do you want to say? 40 by 40, maybe? Yeah, about that. About that big. And it's, you know, it it's her head. It's like a headshot of her. It's a glamour shot. It's a glamour shot of Josie. <laughs> She's so cute. She's smizing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I've got that, and it's been hanging over there, and I've stared at it, and it's like I'm intimidated by the whole process of how to do it. Now that I've taken some of these applique classes, I feel like my skill set, I can do it. That's not my issue. Now my issue staring at it is, oh, fabric. I've got to make sure I have the right yeah. fabric for her because... And we'll show a picture. I'll take a picture of it so we can post it so you can see. But she's got these long ears that have all this 
hair. hair and feathering and different colors, like it's black around the edge and then more of a red tones. And, the, and I'm like, oh, I got to get the right colors for her hair. And am I going to thread paint it? I, I mean, so I've stared at it for probably five years. I'm not bought. All I've done is draw it. <laughs> so is it really UFO when all I've done is draw it? No. Okay, good. Now, yay, that's not on my list. Woo. I mean, for now. Oh, shoot. Start buying fabric. Cord. Start buying UFO. fabric. I'm in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So anything else? I think we've exhausted UFO talk. Have we? Have we? Do you have I anything think... else on your notes? I have um, how to finish up a UFO. <gasps> How do you finish up the UFO? I use yeah, deadlines. Just do it. I have to regain interest in it, give myself a regain yeah. the interest in it. And then if we repurpose it, like if I take something and say, okay, this is no longer going to be my original intent. Yeah. And now it's going to be this yeah, because I'm, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. I've had it where I'm like, okay, I'm doing this thing. It's a lot of blocks. I'm like, ugh, it's not going to fit in my house. I don't know who to give it to. I will break it up into like two smaller things and turn them into charity quilts. Yeah. And, donate. Like, and that sounds horrible. Go to I mean, home. yes, that, I mean, that's what I'm thinking about repurposing. Like yeah. I've got these blocks. And I'm like, I'm not going to want this quilt when it's done. And I don't know who to give it to, you know, here. Community yeah. service. And that's not to say like you give your it's ugly not, quilts to community Yeah. Quilts. And it's I don't want to say point. that. Yeah. That's no, why but it's my... like this color doesn't work for my house or, you know, it's not but at the if same time, it's, it's ugly. I yeah. Don't finish it. <laughs> well, it's not. These aren't ugly. These yeah. are not ugly. They are not my taste. Right. So they could be someone else's taste, and they would enjoy them and love them. Perhaps a nice colorblind child, <laughs> like my father-in-law. <laughs> we'll see how that bookshelf quilt turns out. <laughs> don't worry, the babies can't write us back. Oh, so yes. you know, there Baby. you go. <laughs> Got your number. So all right. Well, that's, I mean, aside from those things, then I think that's all I know about. I can't, we've talked about UFOs almost the whole time. Yes. It's because I have, and now I, sh I feel guilty now. Guilt. That's the other reason I finish them. Guilt. Guilt does good, goes a long way. The side eye. Yeah. Mm. I don't do it as well as you do. I've had a lot of practice. Yeah. I'm just no, by a lot of my people. dirty look is straight on. Like, just, mm. yes. And the flaring of the nostrils that my mother used to get on to me. <laughs> She's like, I can tell when you were mad. You don't just independently flare them. No. I we do like... that at dinner. That's like our Morse code. I do that to my son. He does it back. And then I wiggle my ears and he's stumped because he hadn't mastered that yet. I don't know how to wiggle my ears. I'm not going to do it here. <laughs> anyway. All right. So enough <laughs> of our um, parlor tricks of... <laughs> flaring nostrils and wiggling ears i can do this spoon on my nose thing okay i'm just saying welcome to anyway no context theater, <laughs> no context theater. yay uh, so that's all we have for the sitch oh this month is brought to you by 77 peaches enterprises your one-stop shop for creative sport we'd like to thank 77 peaches big think productions cotton art studio and hip to be a square for being part of the stitch you can find links to their sites on our show site the stitch tv show.com and that's all we've got for this episode. So if you enjoyed the show, please like us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, share it with your friends. Join us for sew-ins. Our next virtual sew-in is going to be Friday, May 13th at 7 p.m., broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and on Google+. My podcast, Hip to be a Square, will be out every Friday. You can email us with your questions and comments at the info at thestitchtvshow.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next month for more quilting chat with friends.